welcome back to another video tutorial. In this video tutorial, I'll show you how to draft the front pants pattern. Here are the measurements you'll need and how to calculate them. You may not need all the measurements. For example, in this tutorial, I omitted the thigh measurement. It's best to take your measurement and do all your calculations before starting your drafting process. That way, you could just dive into the drafting process without any delay. I gave examples of how all the measurements are calculated so that you too will understand how to do the calculations based on your measurements. To start out, you will need a piece of drafting paper that is long and wide enough to cover the length and width of your pants front pattern. Make sure all the edges of your paper are straight. Having a straight edge on all four corners of your paper serve as a guide to having a straight line during your drafting process. From the top edge of the paper, come down 2 inches, then square a horizontal line across your paper. This line will represent the waistline. My ruler is 2 inches wide is why I'm just drawing my horizontal line across on my drafting paper. With the paper facing you, draw a 1 inch to 1 and a half inch line on the left edge of your paper that is the length of your pants, your desired pants length. This line will represent the side seam of the pants. This tutorial is for ankle length pants, so I draw a line that is long enough to cover my pants length of 41 inches. Then with my tape measure, I measured 41 inches starting from the waistline. Next, measure a quarter of your hip circumference along different points of the side seam line. Start from the top edge horizontal line. I measure 10 and 3 quarter inches which is a quarter of my hip circumference at different points along the side seam line. Measuring a quarter of your hip circumference along the side seam line will ensure that you have a straight line. When you get to your desired pants length point, draw a horizontal line that will represent your ankle line. Connect all the points to create the center front line. To recap, at the top edge of the paper we have a horizontal line that represents the waistline at the left edge of the paper, we have the side seam line. At the bottom of the paper, we have the ankle line. And on the other side of the paper, we have the center front line. Label the center front line and the waist line. Starting from the waistline, measure your hip depth along the side seam line and center front line. Then draw a horizontal line across and label it hip level. Again, starting from the waist, measure your high hip depth along the side seam line and center front line. Then draw a horizontal line across and label. The high hip is usually 3 to 4 inches from the actual waistline. Again, starting from the waistline, measure your crotch depth along the side seam line and center front line. Then draw a horizontal line across and label. The next measurement we're going to input is the knee level. 
Again, starting from the waistline, measure your knee level along the side seam line and center front line. Then draw a horizontal line across and label. Next measurement we're going to input is the ankle length measurement. Again, starting from the waistline, measure your ankle length measurement along the side seam line and your center front line. Then draw a horizontal line across and label. Next, we're going to address the crotch extension. The crotch extension is a quarter of the crotch line width. The crotch line width is the same as the hip line width, which is a quarter of the hip circumference. I hope that makes sense. Here I'm just showing you how I calculate, calculated the crotch extension measurement. So extend the crotch level line by a quarter of the crotch level. Or you could use your tape measure. Measure the crotch level line on your tape measure, then fold it in two, then fold it in two again. That will give you a quarter of your crotch level line. Then extend your crotch level line by that amount. First I draw the line with a pencil so I could make any corrections of any mistake. Then go over the line with a marker. Next, find the midpoint of the waist and crotch point. Measure the distance between the waist point and crotch point along the center front line. Then find the middle point and mark. Next, draw a diagonal line that is one and a half inches long at the corner of the extension like so. Then connect the three points of the crotch curve. Then use a curve ruler to connect the points. If you can't draw the curve in one step, then draw the curve in two steps. Draw the upper curve first, then draw the lower curve second. Then extend the line by half an inch. Then square in by half an inch along the crotch level line at the side seam. Next, we're going to address the waist. Here is the calculation for the waist. The waist calculation is waist circumference plus half an inch is divided by four plus a quarter inch. Then you add a one inch dart intake to that. I use my waist measurement to give you an example of how to do the calculation. Measure your waist calculation along the waistline. 
starting from the center front line going towards the side seam line at waist measure your waist calculation using my waist calculation as an example I measured 8 and 3 eighths along the waistline the next measurement we're going to input along the waistline is the dart placement measurement the dart placement measurement is your bust pan divided by 2 your bust pan is your apex to apex measurement or your nipple to nipple measurement starting at the center front along the waistline measure your dart placement and mark if your front pattern is only going to have one dart just measure from the dart placement point one inch then find the midpoint of the one inch dart intake and then draw your dart legs for the purpose of this tutorial i'm going to do two darts at the waist from the dart placement point measure half an inch Then from that half an inch point, measure one and one quarter, which is the space between the first and second dart. Then from that point, measure half an inch, which is the width of the second dart. What we did is split the one inch dart intake into two, making each dart half an inch wide. Then finally find the midpoint of each dart. Here is a closer look of the two dart marks at the waist. To recap, the first mark is the dart placement. Then each dart is half an inch. And then the space between them is one and one quarter inch. Then there is the middle point of each dart. Next, draw the middle line of the first dart, then draw the dart legs. Repeat the same process for the second dart. Each of the darts are three and a half inches long. Next, find the grain line or the crease line of the front pants. To calculate the grain line, measure the distance from the half an inch mark at side seam to the end point at the crotch line, then divide by 2. You could just measure with your tape and then fold the tape measure into 2 to get the midpoint of the crotch line. To ensure that your green line is straight, align a horizontal line on the ruler with the crotch line, the hip line, and the high hip line, then draw the green line. Draw the green line all along the length of the pants. To ensure a continuous straight green line, Measure the distance from the center front line to the green line along the center front line to the ankle point. Then connect all the points with a straight ruler or with an L ruler which will further ensure that you have a straight line. Next, find the midpoint of the waist and crotch point along the side seam line. Then use a French curve ruler to connect the two points. Then smooth out the curve along the side seam line to the hip point. Next, divide your ankle circumference by 4 to get a quarter of the ankle circumference.
Then measure a quarter of the ankle circumference on each side of the green line along the ankle line. Using my measurement as an example, I measured 3 and 3 eighths on either side of the green line at the ankle line. At this point, you could just connect the crotch end point to the ankle point with a straight ruler if you want a wide leg pants. But if you want a tapered pants at the hem, you will need to do the knee calculation. Measure a quarter of the knee circumference on each side of the green line along the knee level line. Using my example, I measured 4.5 inches on either side of the green line along the knee level line. Use a French curve ruler to connect the crotch end point to the knee end point to draw the first half of the crotch curve. And use a straight ruler to connect the knee end point to the ankle point to draw the second half of the crotch curve. Then smooth out the knee point with a curve. Next, connect the hip point and the half an inch crotch point with a straight line. Then connect from that point to the ankle point to draw the side seam of the pants. Use a curve ruler to smooth out the knee point. Next, draw the hemline. Come down 2 inches from the ankle line and draw a horizontal line across. Then fold the paper at the ankle line. And trace the line of the pants with a tracing wheel. An impression will form on the other side of the paper. Use a straight ruler to draw the lines to touch the horizontal line. This is done this way so that you don't run out of fabric when you're sewing the hems of the pants. Next, fold both dart legs closest to the center front line and use a tracing wheel to create an impression to form the dart extension or dart peak. My Pants draft did not create a dart extension. I have a video on how to draw the dart pick. I will leave the link down below in the description box. Next, raise the side seam curve at the waist by a quarter inch. Then draw a new side seam curve. And use a French curve ruler to draw in the waist curve. Finally, add half an inch seam allowance all around your pants sloper to make it into a pants pattern. My seam allowance line is indicated by the dash line. The pants pattern is completed and this is the final result.
Okay everyone, we've come to the end of this tutorial. If I have made the concept of drafting a front pants pattern a little bit easier to understand and helped further your fashion designing experience, please subscribe to my channel, give this video a thumbs up, share and leave your comment down below. Until my next video, bye!